Okay, day 76, try two. Try one did not come out well. That was very skippy and froze a lot. So I decided that rather than try to deal with it, that I would delete it and start over. So if you had a problem with it the first time, here we are, second time. Um, and I, uh, ah. <laughs> And I, uh, I don't know, I decided that I was going to do it over. So, kind of um, off-center, don't look any better than I did before, you know. I really need that haircut. So, anyway, uh, today is National Say Something Nice Day, which was really interesting because it was a day where there has been a lot of not saying nice stuff happening, for better or worse, true or not, right subject, wrong way to say it. I've run into a few of those issues myself today, but hopefully what I have to share with you today now uh, will help to um, have better things come out better in the future. It is also Reef Awareness Day. And a lot of people are not aware of how important the reefs are to us and how many reefs are dying. And so I would invite you, I'm not going to tell you everything it is because you can actually uh, look up uh, our reefs and Reef Awareness Day. You can even find it on uh, the National Day calendar. Um, it's also uh, Olive Day, which I'm very sad about because I have no olives and I'm not leaving the property. I'm still doing my self-isolation and um, I wish the Olive Fairy would drop me off like a nice thing of Kalamatas or ooh, those Sicilian green. That's not happening. Uh, well, it is what it is. But it's also Pen Pal Day, which I think is really important for a very special reason. Um, back uh, on, you know, when 2011, 9-11, 2-11, when 9-11 occurred, um, I was devastated and I was hurting for our oneness, that we're all one, one with, one with God, one with each other, all countries, all colors, all races, all religions, all everything. And, um, and so I just decided to reach out and make pen pals, <clears throat> excuse me, and I made about 10 pen pals all over the world, Hong Kong, Egypt, Russia. Um, I can't even remember all of them now, but that was, you know, like 20 years ago. How did that happen? But it did. So um, anyway, we want to connect with each other. And what's happening is we've been, you know, getting more and more and more and more divided over time. You know, this isn't just about about um, personal issues that we look at, even if we look at um, our government today, what's going on with it, um, what's going on between countries and who's fighting with who and who's an ally with who. It's bigger than that. It's all about the principle of oneness, which we are all one. Barbara Marx Hubbard stated clearly uh, in her book, The Revelation, Our Crisis is a Birth, we are in a birthing process. We're either going to have a Lamaze birth or we're going to have a, the equivalent of a breech birth, which is really not very good. It's very painful and dangerous for everybody. Isn't that where we are now? But I think most of us are realizing we are being born into something new. So, um, and then some people think that a cesarean would be a good idea. Now, go with the metaphor. A cesarean is when the doctor cuts you up, they cap the baby, they put you all back together, and you're good to go. Uh, which is really something that should only be done in emergencies. Our, it's not the way our bodies are meant to function. Again, that's principle. Today, many, many uh, cesareans are being done as a matter of convenience. And um, it, this, I'm not judging anybody, do what works for you, but the point is that physiologically, scientifically, biologically, it's better to deliver the child normally if you can. Ugh. And it's not an easy thing for sure. I know I've been there, done that. 
um, and it, it, it wasn't good, but my, I probably came out of it healthier because of it. See, there's one of the things we're talking about today with principal or personal. When people hear principal very often, they think it, I'm talking about their principles, which would be their values or their way of being. But that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is uh, laws, metaphysical laws, which would be spiritual laws, and they are the laws that are, that we call it laid back of the manifestation of what we, what we um, see in our lives. Uh, we say things like, God is divine mind, gives us divine ideas. We receive the divine ideas uh, through our thinking and our thoughts and feelings. Thinking and feeling, we, we uh, join those energies and we manifest whatever it is that we've got an idea to manifest. And even, see, God created everything and everything was good. It is good. It is good whether it appears good or not. So if we look at it a different way, if we look at it that we want to receive divine ideas from our spiritual perspective, we're going to receive a lot of input from the lower consciousness, which we call the world. So the world says we're separate. The world says, I'm one country, you're another country. A lot of people are afraid that when I say things like this, it means I want us to be homogenized. I do not want us to be homogenized. In the least, I think we each serve a purpose in our own way, and that's one of the best things. Your liver cannot be your kidney, no matter how hard it tries. If your body is to be healthy, your liver must function well. If your, uh, you know, if your, and your kidneys function well, both doing what they're supposed to be doing, not what something else is doing. That is called principle. It is the out, the way the law works. Okay, that's the way things unfold. Personal is the way we want it to be. Um, and, and see, that's down in the, a lot of that, the, the areas of, uh, in the lower consciousness include ego and, um, uh, ego and uh, power, uh, money, uh, money and what I want, uh, rather than what's right for the good of the whole. So spiritual, Upper consciousness is good to the whole. Lower consciousness is the uh, the person. The person, that's what I want. So we get to personality. So we got personal and we got principle. We got um, principle and personality. Now, some people get upset when I say, you know, that our job, one of our jobs is to transform our personality. You know, wait a minute, wait a minute. I like my personality. Everybody thinks I'm funny. They think I'm cute. They think, I'm, yeah, that's fine. That's well and good. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about when we say personal, we're talking about this, this earth suit that we have come into with this brain that functions, that, that whole thing works together so we can have life. It is through this life, through our experiences of life, we are meant to learn and grow and to be able to develop and express our spiritual power. Now, that's not going to happen in the, the human thoughts, the way the human thoughts are and the way the human emotions are. What we're in right now in our country, it, well, in the world, it's not our country, it's the world, it's everywhere, is we're very torn whether it's about personal and on a global level, you would say that national or country as opposed to understanding the country's understanding they're a part of the greater whole. We all are meant to work together. Um, it, principle and personality come out in all of our relationships and we want to know that it applies to everything. There's a difference between sensing, we've said this a bunch of times, which is it, it, getting the, the, the sense, feeling what's right and intuitive getting, getting the messages from spirit. Okay. Uh, now some people, uh, are... Well, actually, I was called today. Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty, which I've been tap dancing around for the past little bit. I did get into uh, a an, an unproductive, unpleasant discussion on Facebook today um, because I made a post. 
and the post was apparently gravely understood, misunderstood. What I said was that we cannot uh, protest lawlessness uh, by breaking the law, but we can protest uh, effectively without breaking the law. What I was talking about was, it, it was very simple, it had a core thought that this is my observation and my understanding of principle. If the protesters had said, okay, you know, we had a good day protesting, we got some points made, I'm going to go home, rest up, come back, and do it again, which is, I'm all for it. I am, I am not against demonstrations. That is our right to be able to have peaceful protests. Okay. Now, because what really started to stir everybody into violence and everything was when they tried to make the protesters go home. And the protesters were still being good. They were just sitting there. They just were practicing what Martin Luther King would have called civil disobedience, which if you got to do it, you got to do it, which is different than trying to make things worse. And that's when the... Uh, what did someone call them? Opportunists. That's when the opportunists came in. Uh, whether they were bust in, flew in, came in to cause trouble, the troublemakers were there and they made a lot of trouble and a lot of people were hurt. And I was very grateful that first night, the, the, the first four nights, that nobody had gotten killed. Well, that stopped last night because somebody got killed. So I was misunderstood to think that, like I was saying, protesters were wrong or that... You know, all I was saying is there's a better way to do it. Well, that wound up with me being called stubborn because I would not change my mind about the way I felt. Well, I'm sorry, but it is the way. No one should ever ask you to go against your beliefs if you're not harming someone else. And it, when we have an encounter with someone that we don't agree with, you can say, well, I will... I will, you know, agree, I will disagree. What do I say? I agree to disagree. I will not say, you're wrong. I may think they're wrong, but I'm not going to say they're wrong. Another thing when we are having difficult times communicating, it's very unhelpful to use the word you. Uh, because to say you uh, divides, okay? You did that, you're stupid, you're wrong, you don't know that. It, there's nothing wrong with saying, I don't believe this is the right way to handle something. But the minute you say you, you've caused uh, contention. That's a principle. <laughs> we have, we put out the words. Words have power. Words have power to heal. Words have power to harm. What do you want to use your words for? Frankly, I prefer to use my words for good. And sometimes when you have a belief system that is different than others, uh, you wind up not being terribly um, popular with some people because they don't agree. And, uh, you know, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't say it. Was I stubborn? I don't believe so. What I do believe I am is grounded. I have studied these principles for over 30 years. I have lived them I have watched them work, and I can say without a doubt that there is a law of cause and effect that is happening. And if we want to change the effects, we've got to change the causes. One of the comments that is being said over and over again today is a Martin Luther King quote where he said, um, he said that, uh, and it's one of those things of taking something out of context, okay? He, he said, and I, I, I can agree with what he said, that riots are the result of uh, the people being frustrated because they're unheard. Nothing, they won't listen. You know, nothing will make them listen. And therefore, there were riots. But that quote actually came from a book he wrote, and he started out with, he would be remiss if he did not say that riots were not good, okay? Then he said, nor 
would it be right? And he made his quote about about the um, uh, that the, it's that that riots happen when people don't listen. So if we're saying that he he did not condone riots, but he also said, but this is happening because people aren't listening. So hello, change is right in your face. Somebody's got to listen. What typically happens? Someone is a, 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 a black person is murdered. Uh, by uh, a white, a white person, white special police officer, and then they are not held on, uh, they are not held accountable. And this is, I mean, our police departments. Um, there are many, many good people who are doing the best they can with what they've got to work with. And it's not all, you know. I mean, we tend to just shove people in pigeonholes. You know, priests are pedophiles. Yeah, there's a bunch of priests who are pedophiles. That's a fact. Lawyers are sharks. Some lawyers are sharks. You know, uh, is, we, we cannot lump everybody. The change has to happen when we actually don't have something happen and everybody gets upset about it and then we go back to being the way we are. That's on us. It's on us, every one of us, as much as it is on anyone else. We elected those officials that we're blaming. Do we hold their feet to the fire? I'm going to tell you, my friends, I am guilty of probably not doing as much as I should. But you know what? I used to trust that everything would come out okay. And people do forget. They get involved in their busy lives. So what happens is we stay locked. We stay locked in the, in the, the personality level. We stay locked in, in ego and and anger and rage and violence and death. We want to rise above it. The only way we can rise above it is when we do things differently. We cannot do the same thing the same way over and over and expect a different result. The point I would like to make today is one that we've used in unity for a long time when we discuss conflict management which is something I have studied and I know something about, and I know it from experience. Each one of you is carrying two buckets. One bucket has gasoline, one bucket has water. When we as citizens, or as wives, or husbands, or children, or uh, you know, in families, when we encounter an ember, of trouble, a problem, a challenge, we have a choice. We can pour the gasoline and make the fire bigger, or we can put water on it and extinguish it. Now the thing is, the flame is not always extinguished completely, and we think it is. Put a band-aid on a bullet hole. So we go on thinking life is okay, and then that ember comes up again. That's because the actual cause of the fire was not addressed. That's principle, cause, and effect. Now, to say you're going to put water on it, you don't put water on it and walk away. You fix it. You take away the initial cause. That's what we have to do, and that's what I was trying to say. Because I did not agree with other people, I would say what it's like to be an oppressed black person. And I am not an oppressed black person, therefore, I cannot tell you. But I will tell you this, I'm an empath. And I feel other people's pain. I told you the other day, I couldn't sleep at night because I was feeling the pain of the people at the protest, both sides. Both sides. I watched those police officers standing in the, in just inside the, the entry of the CNN building while people were breaking the glass. A young man, a young white man, uh, taking a skateboard and slamming it again and again and again into the glass, into the window, trying to break it while there were other ones. And they stood there with their shields, vastly outnumbered. That's not right. And that was not protesting. That was troublemaking. 
And I said then, and I said now, take away that if, if they would go, if the, if the protesters had, had given the good faith, they weren't told they couldn't protest. They weren't told they couldn't come back tomorrow. They were told curfew for tonight. Make peace. It was an idea. And if the people, if the protesters had gone home for the night, the troublemakers wouldn't have had any place to hide in the crowds. They could have been easily subdued. Well, I don't know easily. I'm not a police officer. And I know you're probably going to have opinions about what I'm saying. And I apologize if you don't agree with what I'm saying. That's okay. I'm putting out ideas to think outside of the box, not to be boxed in by the way it is, by the way all, all, all politicians are crap. No, all politicians are not crap. There's a lot of politicians who went into that, that lifestyle, that, that career choice to help people, to help people. And that's what they're trying to do. And what do they get told? They get told they're, they're, you know, they're crap. They all lie. All politicians are, they take money, they do this. I, I'm sorry, folks. I believe everyone has the spark of divinity in them. Do some of them go bad? Yes. That's the ones we address. We don't pigeonhole everybody for a few bad ones. So there's police officers and there's, there's the, the protesters, good people that want change in the world, and I support that. I would like if you can go onto YouTube and listen to Anthony Kumo's uh, update today. It was powerful, and it was spiritual, and it gave words of hope in the midst of this disaster of separation that we're currently experiencing. Yes, people were oppressed. Yes, they are. They are angry, and I, 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 I get that. But it's time for all of us to work together using principle, not our, not our lower emotions, not our anger, not our rage, not our sense of injustice. Nothing could be more true or less helpful. What is going to be helpful? Learning how to deal with it. Turn off the fire underneath the pressure cooker. That's principle. You don't want your pressure cooker to blow up? Turn off the fire. And then deal with what's inside. I encourage you to hold in your mind and your heart everything I've tried to share with you. It's not common thought. It is not. It's, it's uncommon, uncommon thinking. Get out of the box. Get out of the box of limitation and step into a new way of doing things. You know, we came here to this country, so I'm understood. Well, my people were Polish, so they didn't come. <laughs> they came here for a new life, for a better chance. They came from Poland, Germany, Scotland, Ireland. I'm kind of a mix. The originals, the original um, pilgrims came here because they were not wanting to be told who what church they had to go to. They didn't want to be Church of England. And so what happens is they get here, they get their little churches set up, and then they try to make everybody worship at their church. They called the Native American worship savages. What's up with that? They wanted to convert everybody. What's up with that? I'm a Christian. I'm a practical Christian. I see God in all faiths. And my master teacher is Jesus. And I don't, I think Jesus would be all for peaceful protest. Turning over the, over the tables in the, in the temple. Yeah, he was mad. And he tried to calm crowds though. And he didn't hurt anybody. And they were in the church and you weren't supposed to bring the money into the church. Maybe I just stepped on my own tongue. I don't know. So I'm going to go back to where I was. Please think about principle, not personal. A 
okay? If you disagreed with me, I love you anyway. I'll just keep going. If you have any questions, you know it's very easy to assume what somebody meant when they said something. Always feel free to say, what did you mean by that? Or, is that what you meant? Don't say, what exactly do you mean by that? Do you see the difference? It's energy. It's personal against principle. We want to be principal before personal. Namaste. I behold the divinity in you. May you have a blessed day and be a part of the birthing of a great new world.